This year marks the 50th anniversary of the Clean Water Act, a bill requiring states to monitor and improve water quality throughout the United States. The bill was introduced and passed by Congress after the public outcry from Ohio's Cuyahoga River, which was so spoiled by industrial pollution that the river caught fire in 1969. The Clean Water Act led to the creation of a number of nonprofit organizations in each state. The Harpeth Conservancy is dedicated to preserving and improving impaired rivers throughout Tennessee. The organization now annually empowers community members and river volunteers at the River Stewards Award celebration. I now serve as an intern with this organization, supporting their efforts to improve and preserve our rivers. The Harpeth Conservancy has opened my eyes to both water conservation problems and neighbors working to find the solutions in my own backyard. Water is a precious, precious resource. Just think about the amount of times you reach up to the tap just to drink water, brush your teeth, take a shower. Most of us don't think about how many times we try to access clean water on a daily basis. I'm sure if you've been watching the news for the past couple of years or even this year, you've seen that there are crises popping up all over the country from Flint, Michigan, which is still suffering, to Jackson, Mississippi, to even Waverly, Tennessee. And what's really disturbing to me is that 60% of Tennesseans depend on our waterways for clean drinking water, which means that it's not a guarantee. It's not guaranteed that we're gonna have clean drinking water. And that's scary, but what excites me is that there are a lot of ways that we can help. Our mission is to protect and restore clean water and healthy ecosystems for rivers in Tennessee. So what you're seeing kind of in the background is cleanups. And so we get people engaged, we get their hands in the water so they see they have that relationship with the water. We provide the information, we provide the science, we empower communities, we explain, we educate. When I was in grad school, some of the research that I was doing was on tracking the amount of nutrient pollution. So specifically, I was looking at phosphorus and nitrogen when it would leave agricultural fields. So basically it was in the form of fertilizer, but when it rains, phosphorus and nitrogen run off to a field and into a stream. And if we allow too much of those nutrients to get into streams, then we get these large algal growths. And part of what was going on was there was one of these huge algae mats that was growing out. And it was a type of algae that actually was the, had the ability to produce a toxin, but it really drove home a lot of the, the research that I've been working on and the real threat that Yes, we're in a, you know, we're in the United States. We should all easily have access to clean water and, and, you know, healthy rivers, but that's not always the case. And I think we often forget that even in our backyard, if we don't take care of our, our water resources, that, that we can quickly use them such to the point where we can't anymore because they're so polluted. We need more public involvement in making sure that our public space is maintained and taken care of. This is a park that I've carried my kids on. So when I saw an opportunity to come and clean up, I jumped at it. And we've got to begin maintaining green space. We've got to begin setting aside parks within communities, both from a, a wildlife habitat standpoint, a carbon sequestration standpoint, but also uh, it increases value. People want it. it. It makes people feel better. This river cleanup is an example of how we're trying to engage people and say, hey, this is literally in your backyard. It matters whether or not this river is clean. And guess what? It's not. And you get to see firsthand like, wow, there's styrofoam and plastic everywhere. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what's in our water and the problems with pollution in our water. So if we can get people to see like, oh my goodness, like I'm just out here enjoying the water and there's all this trash, what else is happening that I can't see? And that's where a water quality monitoring project comes in. You can be a water quality monitor volunteer, be a citizen scientist. So what we're doing is we're collecting through citizen scientists are going out and they're testing at regular intervals and we're taking that information and our PhD scientist, Ryan, is putting it into a model. Our volunteers will go collect a sample once a week and we will actually evaluate those water samples for E. coli. E. coli is a, a, a warm-blooded gut bacteria that can, can get into our rivers and lakes fairly easily, but really it's an indicator for stuff like salmonella, giardia, a lot of these human pathogens that will actually make you and I sick. Most of the times it's not really like a river issue or a river crisis. A lot of times it's a land use issue when we see pollution 
in these rivers that aren't quite as healthy as we would like them to be. Clear cutting, deforestation, we have too many impervious surfaces and we just have asphalt everywhere and we're not really allowing the land to kind of do what it's supposed to do and slow down water so we're not just all of our, all of our trash and all of our pollution makes it to the river. What the Water Quality Monitoring Program is going to let us do is be able to go to policymakers and decision makers and say, hey, we know this about our rivers. They're impaired. Here's the specific ways that they're impaired. And here's what we can do to restore them and make sure that we protect them for generations to come. One of the reasons that I wanted to get involved with carpets is that clean water is an issue that impacts everyone. It is bipartisan. It is one of the few things that religion, socioeconomic, political beliefs, it's something that we can all come together and that we can care about. And that's what I really love about the Harpeth is that we're an organization that believes that as a community, we have to work together. And that's why we all have our slogan, we are the river. United, we are the solution. A lot of the issues that I've fought to try to convince people are real issues. Your generation understands uh, immediately that they are real issues. And part of the reason that I became so interested is everything that we see in all of our waterways at some point filters down to the ocean. If plastics get in the waterway, by the time it ends up in the ocean, they end up as microplastics. So we've got to start cleaning up where we can and volunteer, take, take time out of your day to come volunteer to make sure that future generations have an opportunity to enjoy it as well. One of our primary goals are to make sure that the rivers in the state of Tennessee are of such a quality that they are not considered impaired. And there's a very specific de definition for what that means. But basically the state of Tennessee will go every five years and they will assess each of the rivers in the state and determine if there are too many pollution, if there are endangered species, if they're low dissolved oxygen, whatever it may be, if there are some of these issues, they will consider that river impaired and it will go on this list. Our goal is to get every single one of those rivers off that list. We imagine a future where everyone has access to clean water and beautiful, safe rivers. This week is the 50th anniversary of the Clean Water Act, which was passed in 1972. And what we're seeing is that we've made progress for sure as a nation when it comes to cleaning up our waterways, but we haven't made enough progress. There's still a lot of work to be done. I think every nonprofit is trying to work themselves out of a job. We want to solve the problem that we've created to face and to come up with unique ways to face those challenges. And it's just going to take all of us to make sure that our waters are healthy.